On a weekend in July, five boats and seven sailors gathered in Elbow, Saskatchewan, on the banks of Lake Diefenbaker for the Elbow Run 2018. It was the sixth year for the run, a week of camping and sailing, and over the years we have become accustomed to the unexpected. 2018 did not disappoint. As often happens when sailing is involved, the weather played a big role. By the time we got underway at midday, we were already down to three boats. Two boats decided, wisely, to wait for the winds to back off, but the remaining three were off and running. As soon as we were out of the relative shelter of Tufts Bay, we were into a cauldron of rolling, unruly waves and very strong, gusting winds converging at the elbow of the river. The elbow runs have been characterized by many first times. For 2018, it was the first time for my new catamaran, Prairie Mermaid, which I'd built during the winter and launched less than a month earlier. It was also a first time on the elbow run for my crewmate, Bo, who had driven from Helena, Montana, to take part in the event. Bo gallantly took the tiller while I tried unsuccessfully to get the reefed mainsail correctly set as we worked our way across the open water. Brent fought his way forward on his Windrider trimaran, also under a reefed mainsail, and Rick followed, still under a full main and with a jib sail that was jammed. It was a wild, wet ride to start the week with, with 18 knot winds gusting to 30. The exciting ride came to an early close for Bo and me. Two hours out, the main mast on the Prairie Mermaid came down. One of the starboard shrouds had frayed through due to a poorly executed splice. Neither I nor Bo were injured, but the shroud could not be jury rigged. After encouragement from Brent and Rick, Bo and I decided to continue on to the first night's campsite. With the mast and sail safely lashed on board, we motored on to Hitchcock's Bay. Rick and Brent, of course, continued sailing, and just before we quit for the night, Rick gave us a display of his sailing prowess. Now remember, the winds had not decreased much during the day, and he was still flying his full mainsail. He loves making that wind rider move. Look at him go.
After an evening around one of Rick's famous campfires, we called it a night. In the morning, after our breakfast, Bo and I sent Rick and Brent on their way, and we returned to Elbow. winds were very much like the previous day, and now with them coming from behind us, I suggested we sail back under the mizzen. After half an hour of sailing hard, Bo suggested we put a reef in the sail to prevent a repeat of the previous day's experience. Meanwhile, the Elbow Run 2018 was taking a much different turn elsewhere. Daryl and his young dog, Mabel, camped overnight at Tufts Bay, and when the weather had not improved, they decided to pack it in and go home. The first monohull to join the event, McGregor 21, crewed by a father-son team, had stayed Saturday night in the marina at, El at Elbow, hoping for a change in the weather. With the wind still blowing hard on Sunday morning, they came up with a new strategy. So we, we hunkered down in the marina just because, you know, we wanted to get going and then uh, the next day we found out, well, okay, we can't go, we're going to have to try and circle back around. Right. And that's where we came up with the, uh, I said, Avery, we're kind of doing this backwards. <laughs> so he said, well, you know, we're see if we can find these guys or, or whatever and uh... While Matt and Avery were still intent on sailing, it was a different matter for Darrell. His decision was based on the safety for his young dog Mabel in a small boat under such difficult conditions. Obviously uh, the 2018 run for me was just a heartbreak. You know, watching the wind get worse and worse as you sit in that parking lot for two days. I'm glad to see a couple boats went out and actually did the whole lake and had a good time, but uh, it's just no good if you're not participating. Rick and Brent under reefed mainsails made good time chewing up the lake as the day went on. When the winds are blowing well, that 145 mile long lake is much shorter than when there is no wind. Soon they were past the Riverhurst Ferry Crossing and then past Rusty's Marina. They had covered a lot of distance by the time they called it quits for the day. Avery and his dad loaded up their boat and drove to the southwest end of the lake, Saskatchewan Landing. There are no direct highway routes from Elbow to Saskatchewan Landing. It was late in the afternoon by the time they arrived, and it was too late to get on the water. They launched early Monday morning and made it as far as Swift Current Bay. When they set out the next day, they started watching for the Elbow Run boats coming from Elbow. They did spot two sailboats in the distance, but they decided it couldn't be Elbow Run sailors because there were only two boats and they were expecting to see three. Of course, Rick and Brent were not watching for Avery and Matt. They didn't know that they had started sailing towards them from Saskatchewan Landing. It is not surprising that the sailors missed each other. The lake is large enough for that to happen. We were trying to backtrack to find you guys. Yeah, we were, yeah, we figured if we can bomb around and get started, we'd, we'd cross paths. Well, then we just sail back because we wanted yeah. to be down a day or two early to get back for some other stuff.
While Matt and Avery set out from Saskatchewan Landing, Brent and Rick were making steady progress heading in that direction. Light winds on Monday morning provided an opportunity for Brent to try out his spinnaker for the first time. It was also the first time for a spinnaker to make an appearance during the elbow run. Brent handled the big sail like a pro, and now everyone on the run wants to add a spinnaker to their sail collection. This boat's been right along. Let's hear some comments from Rick and Brent while we watch them sail. This year was was another great year. Um, it ended up just uh, two of the boats made the, the whole trip. Um, we had some nasty weather the first couple days, very nasty. And uh, the weather changed daily. We, uh, we did some really good uh, miles. We made lots of miles during the day. Uh, didn't matter what we did, we couldn't get going before nine o'clock in the morning. That's packing up their gear and getting in the boats. And some days we thought we were doing really good and looked at the watch and it was still nine o'clock. So. No, it was it was a blast though. We sure made we made it there quick. Like we had it was two wild days of wind there that got us a long ways really fast. So that was Made, made for a seeming, seemingly a short trip to the end there as compared to other years, but that's all we were concentrating on. So, yeah, yeah. well, Rick and I went pretty steady all day long. And as you uh, <coughs> wind up the uh, Lake Beef Baker, you're, you're constantly hitting different winds uh, directions. So, I mean, when you're coming back, you're going west and then you're going southwest and then you're going you know northwest it kind of winds around pretty good which makes it for a lot of fun and uh, different sailings we sit we change sails quite often during the day to try and uh, not get too too much wind on us and 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 uh, when to calm down we set the bigger sails on quite a bit different when you only have the two boats as opposed to what we're used to with everybody there. Yeah, we certainly missed everybody for sure. Day four, Sask landing in sight. Day four, quarter to 11, Sask Landing Marina. Not much wind. Not much use st stopping in SAS Landing. Um, lots of food, lots of ice. Don't sell wind here.
Ever since Daryl and I started the first elbow run, we have talked about making it all the way to the southwest end of the lake, Saskatchewan Landing. In 2017, we were very close to reaching Sask Landing before we turned back. So Rick and Brent were the first members of the elbow run to make it all the way to Saskatchewan Landing and back, and we are still toasting their success. Now back to Avery and Matt. While Brent and Rick turned around and started sailing back to Elbow, Matt and Avery had continued sailing, still in the hopes that they would spot the Elbow Run sailors, and not realizing that they were now behind them. Late in the afternoon, they started to look for a sheltered bay, but they were not successful, and soon it was nightfall. I know that you start looking at three o'clock for your place to slow her down for the day, but no. when you keep on going, the one evening we did, um, thinking there's going to be a bay, you know, it's, there's going to be something around this, there'll be something here. And, done and, that. and there's nothing there. Oh, there's so, nothing. <laughs> so now, so now you, you're, you're at the mercy of um, the northern lights, those are the only lights we had to guide us to anything. We had, thankfully, um, we had a spotlight in the boat, by the time we got anchored down it was 2.30 in the morning. And we really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the anchor wouldn't hold, wouldn't hold to anything. You know? And I had, I had like, a, it's got points on it, and it's flanged out, and it's got the whole graph, and it's like ten pounds. Yeah. But the wind was. The wind was so bad, Rod. It, you, you, oh, because you couldn't get any, any shelter. We couldn't get anywhere. We could not get anywhere. So we were, we were sailing at night. We got the lights all on and everything. And at one point. We, we, we actually said to each other, do you think we should shoot the flare up? You managed to get close enough that you could jump. Well, I jumped off the front of the boat, because <laughs> how do you know? You can't see anything, so you, you think the shoreline's there, so you, okay, you grab the anchor, pop off, and hope your depth finder works. Yeah. Because otherwise you're swimming. We managed to stick it, and, uh, and then that was it. The next morning, oh, we, we just passed out because we were so just, tired. We're <laughs> beat. You know, that's saving. Today is Wednesday. It's about 20 after 10. We are hunkered down, right? Last night. like there's rain coming in from there. So we will stay here for as long as needed. After their late night sailing, Avery and his dad got off to a slow start on Wednesday, returning the way they had just come in the previous two days. With the steady wind, Rick and Brent continued on their way back to Elbow. Somewhere that day, the three boats and four sailors met again and once again did not see each other. So we, we actually started our own, uh, our own adventure, not knowing what to expect. And uh, you also have the, the fact that we're not seasoned veterans at it. So we said, okay, it's the two of us. So now you have a, a father and son trip that is even more uh, bonding. There's more everything reliant on each other to find out, okay, let's find out if we can actually do this without a group uh, assisting or, or asking advice or, or any of these things. And so that's, and I think that's what the elbow run is all about. Really, it's about bring your craft bring your knowledge uh, no one here is afraid to tell you how to do it no one here everyone you ask a question everybody will give you information that's a picture of that old tower that used to be in the air about 25 30 feet it's worn down to a little nub right now Guessing seven, eight feet tall. 
winter are back. We're moving right along. I have the large sails on for now. Let's see how the day goes. Forgot to mention there's a storm chasing us, possible thunder showers. We've been able to stay ahead of it so far. Folks might wonder what it is that attracts sailors to join the elbow run. This is how Bo answered that question. Yeah, well, I wanted to come up to meet Rod, of course, and get involved with the with the mana, and hopefully bring my own boat up too. So, you know, previously your elbow run's been about a windrider connection. This time for me, it was about a warm connection. So, uh, it was more of a boat builder and warm. Thing than anything else. Of course, it's the kind of sailing I like too, which is lakes, lots of shoreline, lots of interesting stuff to look at, and uh, camping overnight, you know, finding a place to go in overnight. So, as far as the things that were sounded fun to do on the elbow run, were exactly the kind of things I like to do, which is camping and sailing and checking out the boats I'm working on. Well, the thing I like about it, and the thing I get the most bang out of it is getting away from other folks you know getting out of the campground getting out of the places you can drive to and maybe spending a little more time where it's quiet where you're not seeing as much infrastructure impact day five wednesday We've calculated, we've sailed approximately 90 miles, or no, sorry, 90 kilometers today. Um, almost seven o'clock. We're across from Palliser. looking for an evening home. After an easier day of sailing, Matt and Avery returned to the sheltered anchorage at Swift Current Bay for the night. Unfortunately, we have no video clips of them sailing, but we know that they were well prepared. As another first for the elbow run, they were equipped with an ice maker. Avery shows us what else they had on board. That's all right. Today is Wednesday. We're just finishing dishes after a really good supper. My dad's scrubbing away. Uh, we've managed to hunker down in a bay here. Just gotta get out of the boat a little bit there. There we go. Got our chairs set up there. And as you can see, it's totally calm. Totally calm down. We got my generator running, making ice and doing some stuff. We're pretty sheltered in here for the night. There's a little outcropping there. It fell off the off the hillside. Got our solar panel, our barbecue setup. This is our makeshift sunshade that we've managed to put together. A couple bungee cords and some good ideas. This is what the inside of the boat is. She's pretty full. Uh, we got our ice maker going. And the way up there is where I'm going to sleep somehow. So yeah, it's a pretty good night so far. Yes, very good night. There we go. Alright, until next time.
day six. Just leaving Palliser. Ferry's coming up fairly soon. Another perfect day for sailing. Wind from the north. We're traveling northwest. Or, sorry, northeast. Brent and Rick were back to Tufts Bay at Elbow in good time on Thursday. It took them six days to sail the 145 miles to Saskatchewan Landing and back. Matt and Avery returned to Saskatchewan Landing on Thursday, and they ended their first Elbow run, but in reverse. And so the tradition of firsts on the Elbow run continued in 2018, with the first demasting, the first monohull, the first spinnaker, and the first ice maker. Another tradition also continued, great sailing on a wonderful lake, producing many memories and entertaining stories. As you might expect, the Elbow Run 2019 is already in the planning, and we welcome all sailors to join the camaraderie. See you on the water soon. Uh, we had a, a great time this year, and looking forward again to next year. Yeah, it would definitely be nice to have a, a, a group again, larger group again, to to do it this year. That'd be great. Who's welcome to join? Anybody's welcome to join. I would I would even say if you have a sailing canoe, come on out. <laughs> yeah, anybody. Hope we get a, a more people sailing this year, next year, in uh, 2019. Um, and uh, everybody's welcome, it's a lot of fun. Uh, packing our stuff up on small boats and, and roughing it is a good adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be back next year for sure. We'll figure out if I'm bringing out my boat or if it's gonna take both of us to sail yours, I guess, or if you'll have somebody to, to help you out. Oh, well, I'll make sure. I, I want to see. I want to see two worms on the boat on the lake at the oh, same time. Oh, yeah, I think that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so, guys, will we make it to Sask Landing in 2019? We stop. Well, it depends on that wind, because that's all it would take is the two two days of strong winds, and you know you can if you and if you can get that at the beginning and make good time, you can take your time or or have a less windy day coming back and it didn't it doesn't affect 